Welcome everybody inside Homestead High School as we have a top-notch end of the season matchup here on the non-conference slate as the 13-8 Homestead Spartans are going to be taking on the 20-1 Norwell Knights. Knights reign out of the 3A. Homestead, meanwhile, coming out of the 4A, out of the SAC. Norwell coming out of the NE8. They won the NE8 in the regular season tournament or regular season title. They went 7-0 in conference play. Meanwhile, Homestead finished 6-3. And, and now we're going to send it down to the PA announcer as we'll have the starters be introduced for both sides. Starting lineups, they're in the books for tonight's matchup between two of the top teams in the Fort Wayne area. Once again, Norwell, the NE8 champs from the regular season. Homestead finished third in the SAC, but they've still got a lot of firepower. But tonight, they're without one of their best players and their point guard, and he kind of controls the tempo for this Homestead high school team. Zach Kruger, who already missed nine games this season for the Spartans, always played 13 games. Played against Carroll last Friday night. He's in street clothes on the bench tonight, so a little bit of a different starting lineup than the traditional one, but not really a different one considering the fact that Kruger's missed the last nine games previous to that Carroll game. So tip is in the books, and Homestead starts with the first possession of the game as they're going to move left to right on your screen, and right away you see the ball in the hands a couple times on a quick pass down low. Now kicks it out to the perimeter as that's Andrew Leeper who fires a three-point attempt, and that one sails wide, rebounded by Norwell, and you hear a big cheer from the Norwell Knights as they travel very well. This team 20-1, and one, the most wins in a season for the first time since 2012. You have to go back seven years, or eight years rather, since the last time Norwell has had a 20-win season. So turnover on the first possession for the Knights, looking a little rusty there. We'll see what Homestead wants to do defensively to stop the likes of Will Geiger and Luke McBride, who can score and play defense physicality with the best of them. Homestead wants to bring it around the perimeter to start things off. That's Alec Grinsfelder with the ball. Back off to Luke Goody, the top 10 junior in the state of Indiana. He's a top 100 player in the country in his class. A lot of suitors already after him. He'll fire a shot from the free throw line and a nice little touch there from Mr. Goody for the first two points of the game. Homestead an early two point lead as Luke Goody he had 21 points in the loss to Carroll last Friday, but they need some consistency here. This is a Homestead team that's struggled with injuries, dealt with some sickness. A lot of illness has affected this team on the season and hasn't had quite the same firepower and consistency that these Chris Johnson teams typically tend to do. As he is the dean of the SAC, he's been in the SAC and been coaching the SAC as long as anybody in the conference. Good little response there from Norwell as they pick up the first back bucket of the game. There's a deflection stolen away now. It's Drew Fetterspiel. He's going to get the hands or the ball in his hands a lot offensively and defensively. It's his 15th steal of the season for Fetterspiel. See where Norwell wants to work it around. Start at the top of key. Back down to Will Geiger. A little bit in and out. Good movement here. It's Eli Riley who had the ball in the far left perimeter. Very, very highly anticipated matchup to cap off what has been an excellent 2019-2020 season. Geiger down low in the post, and he finds a little bit of space. 
Look for Norwell to feed off of that all night long. As Will Geiger leads the team in points, almost averaging 20 a game, 12 rebounds as well. Homestead wants to go down low, now work it inside out. Fire a three-point attempt from the left side. That one falls along for Grant Simmons and rolls out of bounds. They're going to keep it on this end of the floor, so Homestead's going to hang on to the possession. Or rather, they're, they're going to change that call. That's the right call. A little bit of confusion by the official here on the near sideline. This is a team that head coach Michael McBride has put in a prime position to make a run in the 3A side of the tournament. Easily won the NE8, the conference in the other season. They'll had to play Belmont or Eastern March 6th in that set, Mississinawa sectional. Goody goes behind the back. Nice little tap off pass there. Right back to him in the corner. And Homestead's already taken a couple of three point attempts as Goody drives, kicks it, and uses a bit part of the glass to push it down and through and tie this one up at four with 446 left in the first quarter. But this is a Homestead team who has struggled from beyond the arc. 35% from beyond the arc for Homestead. Haven't have found that consistent touch from beyond the arc, and it's quite frankly hurt them in a couple games. There's a nice little feed from Will Geiger to the basket. And that was Fetterspiel, number 32, who couldn't get the finish. Nice pressure there from Homestead defensively, and now they'll have the ball as Grant Simmons brings it across the half-court line. Simmons in the starting lineup tonight in place of Zach Kruger, who's been missing some time with an injury. And there's the drive all the way to the basket. Nice touch and feed for Alec Grinsfelder. Back and forth we go. A low scoring affair with six, or 4 one rather in the first quarter. We play four eight-minute quarters in the state of Indiana. And there's a steal from the Spartans. See if they look to push. Good, he's got it. Finds some space. Now surveys. Now back off. It's a three-pointer. For Grinsfelder, no good, but a rebound for Leeper, and he puts it up and off the glass. A little too strong. That one rattles out to Will Geiger. Extremely physical player is Will Geiger. Leads the team once again in points and in rebounds. Shooting 65% as well. He always finds a nice spot for a shot. Riley with it, back out to the top. That's Luke McBride, son of head coach Michael McBride. McBride just a freshman, the only freshman in the starting lineup for Norwell. Fetterspiel on the drive all the way to the cup, and he puts it in for two. So there's the answer from Norwell. Pretty balanced scoring attack so far for the Knights. Torson's got 10, Wilgers, Geiger's got 10, and now Fetter, or two, rather, and Fetterspiel with two. Goody up and off the glass for two. This team's handling each other pretty well. Emphasis being placed on that interior attack. Torson surveys, now hands it off to the far corner three. Riley, nice little feed, a nice little work around there for Will Geiger, who uses the glass for two. So Goody's got six, and Geiger's got four. They're the team leaders in points as we have 2.22 left in the first quarter. Goody feeds it off. Spartans want to survey. Goody comes near the free throw line, now feeds it off. Out to Archibald. Two outstanding football players on the gridiron for Homestead. Archibald and Goody were this season. Back to Leeper. Andrew Leeper, the only underclassman in the starting lineup for the Spartans, and he puts it in up off the glass for two. That's why he's in the starting lineup right there, the 6-5 frame for Andrew Leeper. He's just a sophomore, but... Averaging 7.5 points per game and shooting it at a pretty good clip, 54% from the field. Homestead with a two-point lead, a little bit of noise from the Homestead student section. 138 left in the first quarter. It's been a pretty balanced attack so far for either team. There's a steal. Simmons with it. He was on the floor and he lost it. Now we're going to get a tie-up. They're going to say jump ball is Eli Riley. And it was Leeper who got that one tied up. Possession arrow is going to favor, I believe, the Knights. As Patrick Roddenbush, one of the seniors in this Homestead lineup, is the first substitution of the game. He's going to check in for the first time off the bench. It's Torson in the corner, almost has it taken away. 
able to kick it back out. Now it's just a shot, just a step in front of the three-point line for Drew Federspiel. Couldn't fall through, and rebound comes out to the Spartans. 106 now left in the first quarter. They'll work it around the top of the key. Very insistent on creating that flow from beyond the arc. Goody, a pullback step. <laughs> he hits it. He makes it look so easy. That 10-foot jumper. A little bit of a fade there as well for Luke Goody. That's why he's a top 100 junior in his class, a top 10 player in the state of Indiana. He's already been offered by a couple of area schools, IU and Purdue interested as well. Offers from Maryland, Louisville, Michigan State, as well as Butler. You're seeing why right now he's got a game high eight points for either team. Season high was against an any eight opponent as well. It's Columbia City, 30 points for Goody in that one. As Geiger's got it with 16 seconds left. John Colbert into the game. That's the first substitution for Norwell. He's got the ball right now. Seven seconds left. Norwell needs a shot. Federspiel with it. Kicks it around. Geiger's going to go on the drive. Gets it taken away. One second left, and Goody's not going to be able to get off the shot, even though he heaves it. Had a pretty good look at it as well, but time had expired off of his hand. So we'll head to our first break at the end of the first quarter. A pretty fast-paced first quarter. No fouls for either team. Clean game for either side as Homestead's got the lead 12 to 8 at the end of the first quarter. We'll take a quick break. You're watching Indiana High School Basketball on SummitCitySports.com. Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field. Dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it. Certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit Parkview Sports medicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We believe in sharing positive stories and are excited to set the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. Welcome back inside Homestead High School, Balen Height here along with Denise on the camera as right now the Spartans Controlling a four-point lead over the Norwell Knights, the 20-1 and one Norwell Knights. And that record's pretty important because that's they're one of six teams left in the state with one or zero losses, still undefeated, rather. So that's a pretty big push for this team. They're undefeated against the SAC. They're 6-0 against SAC opponents this season. Homestead also undefeated against the NEA as well. So either of these teams are going to notch the first loss for their respected conferences. Goody with the ball right now. He's going to go on the drive. He's already got an early eight points as he kind of uses that back foot fade again and just rises up over the defender for two points. Luke Goody's got double digits, or rather eight points. Through about a quarter and 30 seconds. He's on the floor right there. Almost had the steal on Riley. Kicks it back out to the perimeter. Now a little bit of a workaround from Norwell. Geiger with the ball. Just four points for him. As Grinsfeld is doing a nice job defending him. Three-point shot comes out wide. Good box out there from Homestead as Grant Simmons corrals the rebound and now bring it across half court. Feet off into the corner. That's out. Grinsfelder with it. Homestead will rotate. Radenbush with it. Back to Goody just in front of the three-point line. He'll fire a shot once again right in front of the student section. And I'll tell you what, Luke Goody has the touch tonight. In the double digits, first player to score 10 points in tonight's game. With 6.53 left in the second quarter, now head coach Chris Johnson wants two substitutions coming in. It'll be a substitution as well. Drew Federspiel is going to come back into the game for Norwell. Geiger denied. Gets his own rebound, puts it up and in, and that one just a little short. As we get our first foul call to the game. This was a 7.30 tip, and we're through the first quarter in 13 minutes. Not a whole lot of stoppages there in that first quarter. Once again, the first foul in the contest. That's going to go on Grinsfelder. And Geiger will head to the line to shoot a pair. Now, will Geiger a 77% free throw shooter on this season, so not a tough spot necessarily for him, and he couldn't get the kind roll there off the glass. As he'll take a look back at the rim. Now for Will Geiger, he's kind of been a story in the NEA, but many in the Fort Wayne area might not be familiar with him. He's been one of the better players in the overall Fort Wayne area since about his sophomore year of high school. 
is a senior now as he sets his feet and fires a shot. And that one still not a kind roll off the glass. So 0 for 2 trip for the 77% free throw shooter. And Will Geiger at the line. And Homestead comes out with the rebound. As good, he brings it across half court. See what Homestead wants to set back up. Goody's going to come back out and grab the ball. Goody's kind of had his way so far tonight. Already 10 points and long three-point attempt there. Sails wide. But an offensive rebound out for the Spartans. Goody back with it. We'll see if he wants a shot. Instead, gets it back to Archibald. Goes on the drive. Thinks about a shot. Instead, leaper for three. Can't get it. That one a little too strong. And another offensive rebound. Back-to-back -back offensive boards for Homestead. Good energy here for the Spartans. Whole bench standing up, applauding. Those on the floor. Quinn Harmon with the ball. He just checked into the game as well. Goody's going on the drive. Step up from the free throw line and couldn't get the touch on the glass. Collision there as Archibald was trying to back tap it out to the perimeter. And it sailed out of bounds. Had a little bit of contact there with Geiger as well. But no foul called smartly. And we'll get an inbounds for the Knights. Connor Torson with the ball. He's going to bring it across the Spartan logo at midcourt. Hands it to Riley. Trying to find a feed now to Fetterspiel. Fetterspiel's going to go on the drive on Goody. Goody, nice defense there. Holds him off, but a nice little move there for Eli Riley, which is a little too strong. And then a heads up play for Luke Goody, who was kind of sailing out towards that baseline. Would have gone out of bounds, would have been a turnover. Instead, able to throw it off the back of Riley. A heads up play there for the junior. Saves Homestead the possession. And they'll bring it across half court with 5.27 left in the first half. Boy, this win would mean the world for Homestead right now. Just looking for an ounce of consistency. As they've lost four of their last six as we're heading into sectional play after this. They drew Wayne at the Huntington North sectional. That'll be on March, and there's a three-point attempt for Homestead. Sails out of bounds, and a little bit of soccer being played there as Geiger was trying to just Keep Leeper away from the ball. They're going to say it went off a of homestead last, so Norwell keeps the ball. A little bit of banter back and forth between each student section. Feed comes in the post. A little bit of a drive for Torsen. A little too strong off the glass, man. I'll tell you what, Norwell has really tried to attack about that five-foot out range on the drive. Blocked away, sent away for Harmon, and then a rebound comes out. We're going to get a foul on the floor, a little bit of a late foul. Not sure what they're calling. They're going to get Eli Riley with the foul. It's going to be the first team foul from Norwell, but they're going to say it was, I don't know, if, just a little too much rough contact there on the shot attempt. It's kind of a late foul after the shot had already gone up. It's not on the shot. So Homestead will have it. Harmon's going to inbound it for the Spartans. Harmon looking for Goody on the pop. Finds him. Goody on Geiger. That's the match to watch as Goody takes it all the way off the glass, gets his own rebound, and then just lost it out of his hands as Geiger reels it back in. 4.32 left in the second quarter. Shot comes on the far left side. Or pass, rather. On the drive, a lot of contact looking for the... Looking for the contact was Fetterspiel, but moved his feet a couple too many times. And there's a turnover for Norwell. So after a pretty back and forth first quarter, things have started to slow down just a bit. As Homestead's kind of gone on idle with this eight point lead. Goody's going to take his first break. He'll sit out. Well, can't imagine it'll be for too long. As Homestead's found a comfortable groove defensively. Grinsfelder on the drive. Kicks it back out beyond the arc. Leaper, nice little turnaround move. Up and off the glass for two. Tough move there for Andrew Leaper, the sophomore, with four points. Norwell really needs an answer. Their largest deficit of the evening, ten points. Leighton Bailey throws the feed into Will Geiger. We'll see if he gets... A little bit of action offensively, and they'll get the and one for Will Geiger. He just kind of tossed that one up there after drawing the contact and said, why not? He saw the head shake there and found the bottom of the net. So Will Geiger, who was 0-2 in his first trip to the line. Six points for Geiger. 
Also in for the Spartans here, two of Jake Archibald. Archibald's going to check back in as well as Luke Goody. Just a quick break for Goody. He's got a game high 10 points right now for the Spartans. So Geiger will go to the line to try to complete the three point play. Missed his first two, sinks that one, nothing but net. Brings it back to a seven point lead for Homestead. We'll see what they want to do with 3.30 left in the half. Foul on the floor near the baseline. And Grant Simmons got a little too much contact there on the drive, and John Colbert's going to pick up the foul. Colbert's first foul, Norwell's second team foul. We we'll won't have to worry about bonus at least. Probably over this remainder of the 328, unless things start to really get chippy here. There's an inbound shot for Archibald, rolls off the rim, a little too short. And Norwell comes out with the rebound and the clear. Torson bringing it up the court. He wants to drive. Little turnaround on the basket, floats it up and can't get the touch off the glass. Boy, that ball sat up there for a couple seconds before it decided what it wanted to do as it rolled off right of the rim. It's Harmon working around the perimeter. Homestead gets back into the hands of Goody. A little bit of a pop for Andrew Leeper. He'll go on the drive. That one's deflected away. Nice little play there from Torson, who got his arms out there. He'll go on the drive. Shot fake, blocked away. And they'll say a foul on Leeper. That was good help defense there from Homestead in transition to really slow Torson down. So Connor Torson will head to the line. Six and a half points per game for Torson, 2.6 rebounds, and he leads the team in assists. 20 steals, 21 for him now as that one rolls short off the rim. Just a 57% free throw shooter. This is an area where Norwell struggles as a team, so an area where Torson struggles. Just a 68% free throw shooter. Caleb Colping, the junior, is going to check in for the first time. Pretty solid baseball player for the Spartans in the spring, out on the diamond as well. A lot of two-sport athletes in this Homestead lineup. So Torson converts on the second, a one-to-two trip for him, and Lee shrunk back down to six points. Good, he's got it. He's going to draw the matchup of Torson. He's going to take the screen now, step back, kick it back out to Jake Archibald. Archibald back to Colby. Goody will go on the drive. Nice little turnaround. Double team comes for him, and that shot a little too strong. Just rattled off the rim. No good. So Goody had 10 points with 6.53 left in this quarter, and he's been silenced since. Nice job there for Norwell. And yes, Goody did take about a minute break on the bench. But still, Norwell came out with that adjustment. Heads up to Michael McBride there, the head coach for the Knights. Little turnaround jumper from about five feet out. For Will Geiger, no good. And that one off the front of the rim. Rebound coming out Spartans. Maybe you want to see Homestead just push things a little bit more as Jake Archibald pulls up in front of the three-point line, pops it out, and gets the rebound. That was number 32, Grant Simmons, who soared in there. I think he drew some contact as well in the shot, but no whistle called. Torsten all the way to the bucket, and he lays it in for two. Back to a four-point lead now. 6-0 run for the Knights with 1.43 left, and... The Norwell faithful get on their feet. Egging their team on for some defense here. See where Homestead wants to go and try to respond offensively. Leaper's got the ball right now. He's got four points. Goody with ten, and now we got an offensive foul on the Spartans. Let's see who they get with this one. 34. It's Cade Colby who just checked into the game moments ago, picking up the offensive foul. And what Chris Johnson's given that sideline official right there. A little bit of an earful, isn't it? It's some insight, looking for some insight into that call. Torson was just the free throw line, went one and two for Norwell. He had the ball before he handed it off to Eli Riley. Now on the drive, that's number 24. Luke McBride, and he finishes for two. So the freshman finally on the board. He's the second leading scorer for Norwell with 11.1 points per game. Foul in the shot for Goody, and he'll head to the line to shoot a pair as the lead has come all the way down to just two. An 8-0 run for the Knights has brought this thing into one possession game with 59 seconds left in the first half. Goody converts on the first. 
77% free throw shooter. He's been on the line the most of any player on this Homestead team. And can't convert on the second, so a one or two trip for Goody at the line. Norwell can tie here. See if they hold for the last shot. No shot clock in the state of Indiana. You can do that if you like. Riley had a little bit of a space, and now we're going to get a foul. As Andrew Leeper picks up the foul. A little bit of jostling down low for some positioning. Maybe a Norwell inbound from under their basket here on the left side. Sails it into Geiger. He has to kind of go up over, go up and over Goody to grab that one, but able to pull it down. Goody went for the swipe, but Geiger able to fend him off, and now Geiger's going to look for some positioning down low. 34 seconds left. Riley with it, trying to direct his offense. Norwell 9-1 on the road this season. Their one loss came on the road. That was Mishawaka Marion on January 2nd. Relatively low scoring first quarter. Both teams way under pace for their season averages. Homestead averaging 60 points per game. Norwell, meanwhile, 59. 10 seconds left. Geiger's got it. He'll step back, fire a three point attempt, and that one off the net. Rim, rather, no good. Goody half court he. That one's going to sail off the backboard. And we're going to head to the break with a three point game as Norwell finished that half on an 8 to 1 run to bring it within three points. We'll take a quick break here on SummitCitySports.com. We come back, we'll recap what we saw in the first half, and we'll look forward to the second half as well. You're watching Indiana High School Basketball on SummitCitySports.com. Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field. Dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it. Certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit parkviewsportsmedicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our cameras. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Give your home the curb appeal it deserves and trust Kurtz Mio to power wash your home. Additional services include concrete ceiling, deck and fence cleaning, driveway replacement, and stamped concrete. Just head on over to KurtzMio.com, request your virtual quote, and use the code SUMMITCITY for 15% off all power washing services today. That's KurtzMio.com, supporting the youth of Fort Wayne. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. 
Come see us in Decatur at the 2733 Auto Mall and shop seven brands in one location. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walking Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Parkview Ortho Express, located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, gives you access to quick care and orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. Parkview Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Call 260-266-4007 for more information. Reinbold & Anderson is a financial advisory practice. More information about the Reinbold & Anderson team is available at 260-432-3235 and online at reinboldandanderson.com. Developing athletes to be foundationally strong. Healthy and consistent training. Expert staff. Long-term athletic development. Parkview Sports Medicine Performance. Any athlete, any age, any skill level. I'm Cameron Shackelford. I'm the Allen County Safe Place Coordinator. Safe Place is a 24-7 crisis intervention and prevention program. When you come into a Safe Place site or call the Safe Place hotline at 260-466-7077, we go into action, providing immediate help and safety. Safe Place sites are located at YMCA's, local churches, fire stations, boys and girls clubs, and anywhere the Safe Place sign is posted. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. Welcome back, everybody, inside Homestead High School here at halftime, where the Spartans lead the Knights 19 to 16. I'm Balen Height, bringing you through the halftime coverage as we're just about a couple minutes away from returning to action in second half here at Homestead High School, and it's really been a tale of two quarters for either side. Both teams really kind of matching each other there in the first quarter. For the second quarter, Homestead took off really with an eight-point lead and ever since then it's been the Knights kind of answering with an 8-1 run of their own to bring it within three as leading scorers right now Homestead Luke Goody with 11 first half points and Will Geiger with seven first half points for the Knights so Goody leading the way with 11 and Geiger with seven so those two teams those two players rather are our players to watch Coming into this one, they really are the spotlight for these two teams. They're leading scorers for each team. Goody averaging 17.5 points, 7.1 rebounds, 3.1 assists. He kind of does it all for the Spartans and really is able to move the ball well for them while still scoring at a pace that wouldn't be typical of someone who moves the ball so well and is able to kind of distribute for this team as well. Will Geiger, meanwhile, leads the team in points per game at 20 points per game, 12 rebounds per game for him. And Shoots the ball very effectively, 65% on the season for Geiger. And he's had some struggles. Homestead's made him work tonight, trying to get to the cup. He missed a three-point attempt there at the end of the, the half with time expiring. And that allowed us to get to our score currently 19-16 to 16 in favor of the Spartans. But we talked about some keys before the game as... The thing for Norwell was bully down low and establish the pace. If you allow Homestead to get comfortable and you allow them to find something that they can that they can use to their advantage, if you allow them to kind of get into that system, into their game plan coming into the game, it can be a very long game because they'll just slow you down. 
and turn you into what could be a five, six point lead, make it feel like a 10 point lead at certain points during a game. Chris Johnson just has that ability as a coach and in such control of his teams year in and year out. Now a struggle for the Spartans this season really and coming into the night has been the absence of Zach Kruger. No Kruger tonight, played against Carroll. Ended up having five points and five rebounds in that one. A little bit of a shaky game for him in his return as the Spartans lost that one to the Chargers, 61-53. to That was the final conference game for them. But no, no Kruger tonight. And Homestead, a big factor for them. They're 5-5 five five this season when Zach Kruger is not in the lineup. He's missed 10 games this season, or nine games, or there's a 5-4, and four, excuse me, when he's not in the lineup. But he's only appeared in 14 games this season. He's missed nine games with an injury. Now nine games in the season. He's 8-3 when he's in the lineup. They are 5-4 and four when he's not in the lineup. So that's a big, big, big step for the Spartans. He's having Zach Kruger in the lineup. He's been coaching his team up, though, from the side, doing everything you'd want of a teammate who's not in the game, staying active, and that's helped the Spartans as we're just about a minute away. We'll take one more quick break. When we come back, we'll have live second-half action from Homestead High School on SummitCitySports.com. Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field. Dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it. Certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit parkviewsportsmedicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We believe in sharing positive stories and are excited to set the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. Welcome back inside Homestead High School as halftime is over and we're ready for the third quarter. As both teams about to set to take the floor once again and we'll see if either team makes an adjustment as far as lineups compared to the starting lineup and where we started at. And as the inbound comes in for Norwell and they'll control the first possession of the second half. And at the top it's number 24 Luke McBride the freshman son of head coach Michael McBride as Geiger all the way to the basket and right away Norwell attacking that interior as head coach McBride trying to reason with that official he thinks he saw some contact on Geiger on the drive no whistle though and now Homestead with the first possession of the second half for the Spartans. Goody double teamed at the top of the key. Norwell not really allowing him to get comfortable, but he still found a solid stroke. Offensive rebound once again for the Spartans, and that's what's allowed them to have this three-point lead and really stay in this game. The offense hasn't really been there for the Spartans. Defense and hustle on the offensive end for those rebounds has allowed them to be in control. Leaper with it, kicks it back to Goody at the top of the key. Now back on the drive for Simmons all the way to the basket. A lane just kind of developed there for Grant Simmons on the drive. He was almost a little too surprised that he was that wide open. His first two of the contest. Good crowd on hand here in Homestead. Two of the top teams in the area battling it out. Geiger up to the basket. Drew through some contact and finishes with two. Nine points for him. Still under the single digit mark, looking for those double digit points. The only score in this game with double digits is Luke Goody with 11. He's got the ball now. We'll see if he gets a shot here. Still no shot for him in this second half. Cuts around a back screen under the basket. Now fades it down low. A little bit of contact up and off the basket. And that one just shot off the front of the rim. As that was Simmons once again finding the lane. 46% free throw shooter Grant Simmons heads the line. Just two points tonight for Grant Simmons. Had a season high 20 points earlier this year against New Haven. As that free throw toilet bowls all the way around the rim and then files in. Back to a four point lead. So 
Well, out of that one possession range, that could be big, especially for the Spartans, as they are 0-3 this season in games decided by one possession. Nice work there at the line for Simmons. He converts on both. And the lead back to five. Four points for Simmons. Balanced scoring attack for the Spartans. Three players, or five players, all five players on the floor with at least one basket. Wide open lane and blocked away by Simmons. Federspiel thought he was all alone, and Simmons kind of got his hand back there. Nice control and found the ball. Norwell got the rebound, though. It's Federspiel with it once again. Goody guarding him. Back out to McGride. He fires his first three-point attempt, and that one sails a little right. Rebounded, though, by Eli Riley, and now we're going to get a foul on the Spartans. I think they might get Goody on that one. It is going to be on Luke Goody. It's just his first, just the first team foul for the Spartans in the third quarter with 5.39 left. Inbound comes all the way to Federspiel. Almost lost it on the pass to Torson, but Torson kind of had to come out and play that one. Torson versus Simmons. Back to Federspiel. It's John Colbert out there now. He checked in. He didn't start the second half for head coach McBride. Entry feed down low to Geiger. Tries to get the turn. Spins it around, but Simmons steals it away. Good defense being played by Grant Simmons tonight. He wants to go all the way to the basket, coast to coast, and find that one a little bit of a floater. Lead back to seven. The largest lead for the Spartans tonight has been eight. Goody calling for a little bit of noise from the student section. They oblige. And just out of the hands of John Colbert right in front of the bench and into the the hands of his head coach, Michael McBride. That pass was a little too hot for him to handle. So Archibald inbounds it for the Spartans. And Luke Goody brings it across half court. Goody sizes up, thought he might have had a shot there. Instead of rotated around the perimeter. Archibald back to Goody, watch the drive here. Instead he feeds. Down low to Grinsfelder, and we're gonna get a foul called on Norwell. They're going to get Geiger on the foul. foul number Rather, that one's on Luke McBride. So McBride's second foul. And the 61% free throw shooter, Alex Grinfelder, steps up to the line. A little too strong on the first. Second leading scorer on this team, Alec Grinsfelder, just behind Luke Goody. Grinsfelder's only got two points tonight. Drops that one in, a one-for-two trip for him. And the lead now back to eight. Large of the game for the Spartans. 4.26 left. Norwell still without a bucket in this second half. Or rather, just the one bucket from Will Geiger. Good movement for Norwell. Colbert's got it. He's got to get rid of it, though. A little bit, got a little stuck there. Federsfield looking for the feed down low to Geiger. Good defense from Grinsfelder to deny the feed. Geiger's going to have to come out and get it and go on the drive. He'll turn around. Fire to the corner. Three-point attempt coming for Tolbert, or Colbert, rather, and he knocks it down. Big-time shot there from John Colbert. Brings the lead back to five for Homestead. And a little bit of life as Colbert picks up points one, two, and three of the contest on that three-point attempt. Goody wants the play from head coach Johnson. He calls it. He'll set right in front of the free throw, or free, th free throw line before he feeds it off to Andrew Leeper, who knocks down the three-point attempt. So answering three-pointer for Andrew Leeper. Seven points for him in the contest. Leeper just a 44% shooter from beyond the arc. Homestead as a team, 35%. Maybe that gets the stroke going for the Spartans from beyond the arc. Torson on the feed around. Now McBride goes on the drive. Finds a little bit of space instead. Feeds it back off to Federspiel. Back out and a little bit of confusion there before Torson gets it. Down low to Geiger. He'll turn around. Step under the basket. And he stepped out. Alternating possession and a turnover for Will Geiger. And the Norwell Knights Homestead retains with 2.58 two left in the third quarter. Riley checks back in for the Norwell Knights. Goody wants to play once again from Johnson. 
Still scoreless in the second half is Luke Goody. At 11 points at the end. Shot here from Goody, though. Step back three, a little too short off the rim. Rebound Geiger, and Norwell wants to push. McBride going on the drive. Keeps backing down Archibald, and they're going to say a foul on the baseline. I don't know about that one. Looked like McBride might have had a little bit of an angle there with the shoulder. Obviously from our positioning here on the far left side. Didn't quite get the access in the line there on the, on the site that that official had under the baseline, but very physical play both ways. Interesting. To blow the whistle on a pretty low scoring affair and turnover there on the inbound. Nice job defensively for the Spartans. Leeper thought about a shot as Goody kind of gave him the football pass. The quarterback out on the football field. That's nothing new to him, those long field passes. Back to Archibald. Surveys around, needs to get rid of a good defense from the freshman McBride. Back out to Grant Simmons. Now drive for Leeper, kicks it over to Simmons. He'll fire a three-pointer and knocks it down right in front of the Homestead bench. That's a big-time shot for Grant Simmons. And Norwell needs a timeout. What an answer for the Spartans. Yes, traditionally... Goody had to kind of carry the load there in the first half, an early first half, 11 points. Just a 30-second timeout just to kind of get things figured out for the Knights, but that was quite the sequence there from the Spartans. The steal on the inbound, and then the shot from Simmons in the corner. Now, Grant Simmons has only made two three-pointers all season, or, or rather attempted two three-pointers all season long, has not made a three-pointer. So that's his first made three-pointer. And that one looked like he could have made a couple on this season already. Pretty smooth stroke there from the junior, 6'4", forward. Largest lead of the night for the Spartans is 11 points. They have it now. It'll be an inbound. Norwell will have to go the full length of the court with 2.05 left in the third quarter. They need an answer here. Norwell in jeopardy of dropping their first game to an SAC opponent and their first game in the last 12. They're on a 12-game winning streak coming into the contest. Torson on the drive, almost lost that. Now Geiger being double-teamed by the Spartans, but he puts it up and in and finds the basket for two. Norwell's going to work their way back into this one. It's going to come probably from the hands of Will Geiger. Good ball movement, some nice spacing for the Spartans right now. Grinsfelder with it. Looking to, to hand it off, he does to Simmons. Now Goody calling for right near the free throw line. He'll fire a shot, just a little short off the rim, but the offensive rebound coming out to the Spartans once again. That second chance opportunity has really come in handy tonight for Homestead as that was Alex Grinfelder. Grabbing that offensive rebound, and he's a real physical post player, very physical defender as well. But he only averages just one and a half rebounds per game, so. Big time offensive rebound there for him. Has a lead under single digits for Nor or for the Spartans right now, but a chance to push it a little bit more into double digits. Goody's gonna go on the drive on Geiger. He'll work things around. Back out to Simmons, who wants another three-point attempt, and he knocks it down. Grant Simmons has only attempted two three-pointers all season long, and he's two for two tonight. Sometimes you just cannot make this stuff up. He's got a game-high 12 points. His season-high was 20 points against New Haven. He's got a chance at matching that or passing that with 47 seconds left in the third quarter. Nice little feed for Nolan, an answer. Down low to Geiger, but the shot falls long. And Homestead has been physical all over Will Geiger. There's a double dribble for Grant Simmons, and he knew immediately as that was a pretty easy call for that official on that far side. Leeper checks out for the Spartans. Patrick Roudenbush in for the Spartans. Fetterspiel back in for Norwell. For the Knights, he'd at least want to try to cut it to 10 before the break. He got 33 seconds left to do that in the third quarter. Drew Fetterspiel with the ball. Luke Goody's done a tremendous job guarding him this evening. Only two points for Fetterspiel. They've let Alex Grinfelder kind of take 
on the task of guarding Will Geiger. And it looks like head coach McBride wants to hold it and have his team sit for the last shot. It's in the hands of Connor Torson. He'll trigger things with nine seconds left. Feeds it off to Leighton Bailey. He's got to fire a three-pointer that's not even going to get any part of the rim. Rebound Spartans. And a heave coming from the other side. And that one was a lot closer than it might have been as Grinsfelder was just trying to heave it up and get it out of traffic. So Homestead answers with a pretty nice quarter. They lead 35 to 23 at the break. We'll take a quick break here on SummitCitySports.com. We come back, fourth quarter action from Homestead High School. Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field. Dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it. Certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit Parkview Sports medicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We believe in sharing positive stories and are excited to set the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. We're back inside Homestead High School. Balen Height here, Denise on the camera for us tonight. And the Spartans eight minutes away from handing the Norwell Knights their second loss of the season, just their second loss of the season. And defending the SAC against the Knights as they have ran through the SAC. They're 6-0 against SAC opponents all season long. Homestead with a chance to get a big-time win here with their point guard on the bench with an injury and Zach Kruger. And a huge momentum push as we get into postseason play here in the state of Indiana. Goody's going to all in the drive. He was quiet in that third quarter. No points for him, but good push out of the break. And a 14-point lead now for the Spartans. Goody's got 13. That's a game high for any player. And as really there has not been an answer for Norwell offensively. They're going to need some three-point shooting. And McBride's going to get tapped on the drive. And we'll get a foul called against the Spartans. Two, Jake, Archibald. Jake Archibald on the push on the drive. It's going to be Archibald's second foul, third team foul for Homestead. I can't get over the blistering pace in this game. It's 8.22. This game tipped off at 7.30. We're not even through an hour yet. Not a whole lot of fouls being called. Not really a whole lot of free throws or stoppages. There's a turnover there. Goody with the steal. He's got 28 steals now on the season. Does Luke Goody. Behind his back, kicks it off. Maybe a potential shot there for Roudenbush, but he smartly pulls back and now... Spartans will rotate the ball. Goody wants to work on the drive. She rises up over the defender, and that one a little too strong. No good, but Archibald looking for the save into the hands of the Knights. 6.55 left in the game. Quick shot maybe coming here. Torsen's going to go all the way on the drive on the cup, and he's going to get fouled. And, boy, that was a late foul call. As Torsen got the contact, without a doubt, he was fouled. The whistle just didn't come until a good two or three seconds left. Remember, there's no continuation here in the state of Indiana or even in high school basketball for that matter. So questionable late whistle there. Right call overall. I'm not questioning the call whatsoever, but it's just interesting. The whistle came a little bit later. As Torson knocks down the first, and Norwell finally able to break the ice there with a bucket. Torson converts on the second. Trims it to a 12-point deficit. 6.49 left. You're going to need a lot of stops for Norwell. Like I said, the Spartans can make a 10-point lead feel like a 20- or 30-point lead. There's a push. Yeah, it's Grinsfelder. A little bit of contact from Luke McBride. So McBride picks up his third, team's third. Free throws might become an important factor in the... End of this one as we look to close things out. 69% free throw shooting team are the Spartans. That one's tipped away by Norwell. We'll stay on this end. Archibald will trigger the inbound for the Spartans under the basket. See where they look to find. Goody's got some space. He'll fire a three-point attempt. 
and a little too strong. Boy, Luke Goody has struggled just a bit from beyond the arc. Now, granted, he has to take a lot of threes. He's the primary scorer for this team, 133s in the season attempted for Goody, but he's just shooting 31%. He struggled for just a bit from beyond the arc. Normally, you might want to pick up the pace just a little bit here if you're the Knights. They're a bit of a methodical team and have really not been used to playing down a lot this season. They've been on top majority of the games. It's kind of how they control the games and have allowed themselves to be in this position. Torson's going to get fouled in the drive, and boy, Chris Johnson shaking his head just a little bit on that one. He's the dean of the SAC. He's been in the area and been in the SAC coaching the longest tenured coach in the SAC. Leaper back in, so Homestead with a little bit more size. They're looking just on the floor, just without looking at the stat sheet or the piece of paper, really, you can tell the big size difference for Homestead. That can help, but Norwell matching the physicality so far. 16 fouls for the Spartans, so we might see some free throws a little bit more frequent here in the fourth quarter. Norwell's got to work quickly here. You like the ball movement, but boy, you're losing a lot of time. Homestead is perfectly content with playing at this pace. Back out, corner shot attempt coming for Riley, and that one didn't get any part of the net. Not a good-looking shot there for the Knights. And the Homestead student section letting them hear it. Needs some stops. Good, he's got it. Back taps it out to Leeper. Kicks it between his legs and hands it back off to Goody in front of head coach Chris Johnson for the Spartans. Goody getting worked back by Torson near the half court line. Just a simple man to man right now for Norwell. Nothing too tricky defensively. Archibald holds. Dishes back out. Grinsfelder with it. Grant Simmons was in the drive. A little bit of contact there, but no call. Simmons might have gotten away with a push. Homestead perfectly content. I can't stress that enough as Goody takes it all the way to the basket and a little too strong on the lay. <laughs> he shakes his head there a little bit. It might just be one of those nights sometimes. Either team really struggling shooting the ball. As Nice defense there without using the contact on Riley. It's very tough to do at the high school level as there's a reach in and a foul being called on Norwell. It's a tough, tough thing to do at this level is defend without forcing contact. Fetterspiel back into the game for Norwell. Eli Riley checks out. Archibald on the inbound. Finds it back on the drive. He'll all the way to the basket. Lays it up high off the glass. And couldn't get the shot to follow through, but... He's going to head to the line on the shooting foul for two. Drew Fettersfield picks up his first foul. 15 foul for the Spartans. And Archibald heads the line. One of the better free throw shooters on this team. 81%. In fact, he is the best free throw shooter on the team. Jake Archibald able to convert on the first. Outstanding football player. Kind of a gadget guy. Played defense for the Spartans. Played the Ran the ball from the running back position. Caught a couple passes. I can remember the game against Carroll in the sectional round. Homestead went on to win that sectional. We're going to get a timeout, I believe a full. From Chris Johnson, the Homestead Spartans. So we will quickly take one timeout with them. You're watching Indiana High School Basketball on SummitCitySports.com.
Give your home the curb appeal it deserves and trust Kurt's Mio to power wash your home. Additional services include concrete sealing, deck and fence cleaning, driveway replacement, and stamped concrete. Just head on over to KurtzMio.com. Request your virtual quote and use the code Summit City for 15% off all power washing services today. That's KurtzMio.com, supporting the youth of Fort Wayne. Back inside the gym here at Homestead High School as Homestead with a 14 point lead with just about 4.30 left in the contest. And you've got to give a tip of the cap to Homestead for their ability to just slow a team down and take them out of a game. That's exactly what Homestead has done as Geiger fires a three pointer and he knocks that one down. Maybe a little energy now for Norwell. Geiger cuts it to 11. He's got 14 points. It's a game high for any team. Right back to the basket. Leeper quickly with the answer. And Andrew Leeper's been really impressive tonight. Nine points for him. The only underclassman in the starting lineup for head coach Chris Johnson. Everyone else is either junior or a senior. And Geiger wants a shot from the free throw line. And boy, he's feeling it. I mentioned it earlier. If there's going to be a response from Norwell, it's going to come from Will Geiger. Battle for the ball, good defense for Norwell. They got to help though. Simmons on the drive, and he couldn't get that one to follow through, but he'll head to the basket. Or rather, that's Alex Grin Alec Grinfelder. Excuse me. Feddersfield picks up his second. 16 foul for Norwell, 16 fouls for the Spartans as well. Can't get the first, a little too strong. That one rattled in and out for Grinsfelder. 61% free throw shooter is Grinsfelder. That one goes in, so one for two trip. Back to a 12 point lead, 3.36 to go. Push off to the right corner, McBride with the ball. He'll go all the way on the drive and try to float it up and he's gonna travel. Boy. Luke McBride has tried to initiate contact on the drive a couple of times tonight, but to no avail. To him, the Spartans do such a good job of defending without contact. Forcing a defender a certain way or just cutting off a lane. Not allowing them to get the body off the shot. Back out, Grant Simmons, he'll fire a three. He couldn't get that one, he was two for two tonight. Once again, Simmons two for four now on the season. Coming into tonight's game, only two three-pointers attempted all season long. Three-point shot for Riley. That one shales a little wide. Off the front of the rim and back off the backboard. Out to Goody. He stops near the half-court line. Moves it around. Good break there for the Spartans. And oh, my goodness. Alex Grinfelder wanted all of that rim. And he couldn't complete the flush. That would have been a pretty finish. We'll see if we can get that on the Summit City Sports replay. We'll get it quickly as we got a foul being called, but you just see Grinsfelder just miss out there on what would have been a sure two-handed slam. Probably would have brought this gym down, and that might have put the dagger in the Knights. Instead, he gets a chance at the free throw line. He was one for two on his last trip, and converts the first. Back to a 13-point lead now. Seventh team foul for the Knights, so Spartans in the bonus for the remainder 245. Grinsfelder off the front of the rim, and we're going to get a lane violation on Grinsfelder. I think he ran in a little too soon as he knew that one was a miss coming in off the hands. Just a 13-point lead now. Will it be enough, or will Norwell have an answer over this final 240? Geiger thought about a three, now comes off a screen. He'll go on the drive. Step just in front of the free throw, free throw line and try to force that one up off the glass, but not strong enough on the touch. And rebound coming out to Sparty. Goody with it. Got the yellow pop on those shoes. No look pass down low to Simmons, and that one's battled off. And Simmons gets his own rebound, though, and head of the line on the shooting foul. And look at that. There from the Spartans. Good effort getting the teammate up. I'll tell you what, any coach is going to preach that. That's how you know a team is together. The action's on the court together. Simmons at the line. 
got 12 points tonight, make it 13. Just a 46% free throw shooter. Homestead is a team, a 69% free throw shooting team. Not too bad as far as the high school ranks go. Anywhere near 70%. Pretty solid mark as a team. Two for two trip and a 14 point game so far for Grant Simmons. Six shot shy of his 20 points game high against New Haven earlier this season for the Spartans. Feed comes down low and it's stolen away from Geiger. Couldn't read that double team. Boy, props to Homestead. They've done what they needed to do tonight. As they've got a 15-point lead with two minutes left. And you start to get the feeling that this could be it for Norwell. As a foul is going to get called on Torson. Too much contact as he's trying to pull that one away from Luke Goody. Goody will head to the line, converts on the first. Eighty-eighth player in the 2021 class. 20 points or more in a game seven times this season. That's consistency as he goes for a 2-2 trip at the line, and that all but will ice things. For Norwell. As good as got 19 tonight. Every starting lineup member for the Spartans with a bucket in tonight's contest. That's good touch and consistency for the Spartans. Fetterspiel let one go right near the free throw line, and that one's stolen away by Geiger. Got to get a quick shot here. Colbert's going to fire that one off the rim, kind of an awkward bounce, and comes out to the Spartans. Archibald slowly brings it across half court. He's met with some pressure from McBride. Has to turn and get rid of it, and he does to Goody. That one's stolen away. Good work there from Torson. Now Norwell wants to push. Geiger go back to the basket and kind of just feed that one up there. It's a tough shot to throw up there, but a 15-point lead still for Norwell as head coach Michael McBride wants a quick 30, I believe. Maybe a full. We'll see what it is. It's going to be a full timeout with 55 seconds left in the fourth quarter, and we'll take one last timeout before we end the game here as Homestead in control by 15 with 55 seconds left. In the game, you're watching Indian High School Basketball on SummitCitySports.com. Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field. Dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it. Certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit parkviewsportsmedicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We believe in sharing positive stories and are excited to set the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. Homestead firmly in control with 55 seconds left out of the break. In the game, 47-32 in favor of the Spartans. As head coach McBride wanted a quick timeout as they'll set up the full court trap. Good work here into Goody. Under the basket, he's got to get it across the half timeline. Feeds it up to Leeper, almost ran it out of bounds, but a good feed. Now to Archibald on the drive. Kicks it back out, good break there. From the Spartans, and the foul comes on Alex Grinfelder. 61% free throw shooter heading to the line with 44 seconds left. It's the first foul on Geiger, 10th foul on Norwell, so double bonus for the Spartans. Rinsfelder converts on the first. Brings his point total to eight. I said Goody had 19 earlier. That's a correction. 17 points for Luke Goody. Once again, a correction as well. A little hard to read the far scoreboard. Seven points for Grinsfelder, and then Geiger drops it in for two quickly. And another timeout coming for Norwell. This one's going to be a 30. We're going to keep it right here. 
And I'd like to thank everybody for watching today's broadcast being brought to you by SummonCitySports.com. Follow us on Twitter at 260Sports. Like our Facebook page, Summit City Sports, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Kelly Automotive Group is Indiana's number one automotive group with over 1,000 new vehicles and 500 pre-owned vehicles to choose from. Please visit drivekelly.com. Simple, transparent, and reliable. Acme Bar and Grill is currently located at 1105 East State Boulevard, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805. Order your favorite pizza, pasta, salad, and more, all with the click of a button. Acme Bar and Grill accepts orders online for pickup as well. Give your home the curb appeal it deserves, and trust Kurt's Miyota Power Wash your home. Additional services include concrete ceiling, deck, fence cleaning, and driveway replacement, as well as stamped concrete. Once again, thank you to our sponsors, everyone in the Fort Wayne area and out of the Fort Wayne area, that allow us to bring the coverage of your high school athletes live for everyone to see. Nice pass work here for the Spartans as Archibald all alone into the corner. Grinsfeld are all the way to the basket, and he lays it in for two. That should all about wrap it up. 16 seconds left. 51 to 34, and that one's stolen away. Norwell will call off the dogs, and what a game and a good performance for Homestead. You see the intensity there from Luke Goody. As the Spartans pick up a big one. Heading into postseason play, they move to 14 and 8. Six, or they're still 6 and 3 in conference play, rather, not in conference play anymore. And Norwell drops to 20 and 2. So two good regular season games, or two good regular seasons for either squad as both teams are going to be heading into postseason play. We'll take one quick break on SummerCitySports.com. When we come back, we'll recap the game and look ahead for the Spartans and see what we've got left on the slate for either side. You're watching Indiana High School Basketball on SummitCitySports.com. Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field. Dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it. Certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit Parkview Sports medicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Give your home the curb appeal it deserves and trust Kurt's Mio to power wash your home. Additional services include concrete ceiling, deck and fence cleaning, driveway replacement, and stamped concrete. Just head on over to KurtzMio.com, request your virtual quote, and use the code Summit City for 15% off all power washing services today. That's KurtzMio.com, supporting the youth of Fort Wayne. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, 
reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Come see us in Decatur at the 2733 Auto Mall and shop seven brands in one location. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Parkview Ortho Express, located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, gives you access to quick care and orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. Parkview Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Call 260-266-4007 for more information. Reinbold & Anderson is a financial advisory practice. More information about the Reinbold & Anderson team is available at 260-432-3235 and online at reinboldandanderson.com. Developing athletes to be foundationally strong. Healthy and consistent training. Expert staff. Long-term athletic development. Parkview Sports Medicine Performance. Any athlete, any age, any skill level. I'm Cameron Shackelford. I'm the Allen County Safe Place Coordinator. Safe Place is a 24-7 crisis intervention and prevention program. When you come into a Safe Place site or call the Safe Place hotline at 260-466-7077, we go into action, providing immediate help and safety. Safe Place sites are located at YMCAs, local churches, fire stations, boys and girls clubs, and anywhere the Safe Place sign is posted. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. Welcome everybody back inside Homestead High School. We've got a final 51 to 34 the score for the Homestead Spartans as they finish out the regular season with a win. They finish 14 and 8. And we've got Luke Goody joining us after the game. Goody had a game, or not a game high rather, but a team high, 17 points for you. And Luke, how are you feeling just in general overall as you, you're finishing year three here? What's been the biggest difference for you? Um, obviously, as a freshman, I came in, um, had a little bit less of a role. Um, obviously, the seniors that year with Oni and Sam, they were uh, good players and then sophomore year um, I need to step up and score a little bit more and then this year obviously that's one of my main roles is to step up and score um, but honestly uh, to a team aspect of it I feel like this game I mean we just played so well as a team um, our guys came together and we fought the whole game obviously that's a great Norwell team and we took care of business. It's a tough loss last week against the Chargers you got a whole week to think about that one what was the message through practice through the locker room all out through the other week coming and playing a team in Norwell who's beaten every team they faced in the conference in the SAC, 20-1, and one, one of six teams left in the state with just one loss or without a loss, rather. What is the message all the way, all the way through the week? Yeah, um, one of the messages all through the week, like I said earlier, was just a fight. Um, we feel like as a team, the captains came together, coaches came together, and we felt like this season we haven't showed much of fight and much of that grit. Um, so the whole week we were just uh, saying that word over and over, um, obviously practicing and practice really hard. Um, and that was just what we were doing the whole game. Big win for you guys tonight. You've got the Generals next. Where's the team's mentality heading into postseason play? Yeah, we're just going to keep the momentum rolling. Uh, we just beat a great team, a really highly ranked 3A team. Um, then we're going to go into Tuesday and play really hard. 
That was Luke Goody, Homestead Spartan Jr. 17 points tonight for Luke. He's still got a lot of work to do. As we get into postseason play, Luke, thanks for joining us tonight. Sure, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you, very much. you too. That was Luke Goody once again, the standout top 100 junior in the state, uh, or in the country rather, top 18 junior, or top 10 junior in the state of Indiana as we will continue to wrap things up here on the India, or Summit City Sports postgame show as we'll get the, the final scores for the starters. Jake Archibald, two points for the Spartans. Luke Goody, 17 points. Alex Grinsfelder, nine points. Grant Simmons, 14 points. Andrew Leeper, nine points. And we hand it over to the Norwell Knights. Three points for John Colbert. 20 points for Will Geiger. He had a game high for either side. Really had a nice push there at the end. Just fell a little too short for the Knights. Connor Torson, seven points. Luke McBride, two points. Drew Fetterspiel with two points as well. So that'll wrap things up on this broadcast for Summit City Sports. For Denise on the camera, I'm Balen Height. Once again, the final from Homestead High School, 51-34 to in favor of the Spartans over the Knights. Homestead moves to 14-8. Norwell drops to 20-2. and Enjoy the rest of your Friday evening, everybody, here in the Fort Wayne, Indiana area as we'll sign it off. You've been watching Indiana High School Basketball on SummitCitySports.com.